Hey guys, Ifonis Fanatics here. It's been a while. I recently received two packages, so I wanted to do an unboxing and first look for you all. And once again, I got something from Spinfit. We'll check that out later, but for now, I wanted to open up both boxes first. With my trusty Swiss Army knife, I sliced open the boxes though with some difficulties because, well, I was holding my phone on one hand. Normally, I would bust out my DSLR and tripod when I do any unboxings and reviews for this channel, but this time, I was just really excited to check out the packages that I decided to open them up right away. Also, the fact that I didn't have my recording setup with me at the time didn't help. By the way, I'm recording this using my Galaxy S10 Plus at 4K 60 frames per second, so definitely let me know what you think in terms of video quality compared to my other videos. I think I prefer the bokeh, and color of my Canon DSLR, but my phone just records such sharp videos that I feel like it's at least worth experimenting with. Maybe I'll set it to 30 frames per second, so I also get image stabilization to go along, who knows. Anyway, the big box is actually something I ordered from Drop slash Mass Drop. This is the Ultimate Ears Reference Remastered that I ordered around one month ago when they were doing their Ultimate Ears Pro Universal Fit IEMs Drop. I could choose between UE7, UE11, UE18+, Plus, and the extremely expensive UE Live, but I ordered the Reference Remastered because it's just something I have wanted for a very, very long time. Having a custom like fit earphone with a reference, flat sound is something I find more and more important, not just for music listening, but also for monitoring vocals like when I EQ vocals for videos for this channel, and also for work. I have earphones that I really enjoy listening to, but none of them I'm confident enough to use for reference, especially in the treble range. We'll go back to the earphone later. For now, I want to open the box from Spinfit. And just to show you, yes, this is once again directly sent from Spinfit's Taiwan. Spinfit being a Taiwanese company, of course. I didn't buy these, I got these for free, but I have agreed to review them in exchange. This is the second time this has happened. The first time was when they sent over 160 US dollars worth of ear tips for me to try out, which you can see my unboxing and review for in the video description down below. I really can't thank them enough for showing so much support for my humble little channel, despite my low sub count, small viewer base, and occasional unfavorable comments towards their products. This still feels absolutely unreal to me, but of course, I guarantee you guys that I will not let Spinfit's arrangement sway my honest opinion towards the product. If there is something I don't like, I will let you know. But back to the unboxing, this time I'm asked to specifically review a single model of e-tips. They are wrapped in this packaging material, and they are actually the newly updated Spinfit CP100. Oh yes, the OG, the classic, the de facto Spinfit that everyone in the hobby seems to own. However, they say these are updated over the original by using a longer umbrella or flange as I call it, which is supposed to provide tighter seal, comfortable fit, better noise cancelling and sound performance to directly quote Spinfit's email. But really on first look, they just look the same as the original to my eyes. I got sizes from SS to L, and they all feature packaging of different colours but equal gorgeousness. Right now, I'm doing a close-up of the packaging for all sizes and also showing you what they say on the back, but trust me, they are all the same. What is interesting, however, are the physical measurements for every single size. A is the inner diameter of the opening at the bottom, which determines what earphones will be compatible with it. B is the max diameter of the flange, and C is the overall length. Comparing to the original, it seems there are indeed some differences. Inner diameter is 2mm longer for all sizes, but the flange is narrow for medium and large sizes. Length is a little bit complicated. It is shorter for size SS, identical for S and L sizes, and taller for size M. You can also say these are basically CP100Z with longer overall length. Whether there is going to be any sonic difference between this and the original will be something I have to try out very carefully in the hopefully not too distant future. After the vibrant show of colors that is the Spinfit packaging, we move on to this dull looking UE box. There's practically nothing on the box aside from some labels from UE and Master. Oh, sorry, Drop. Won't ever get used to it. But yeah, this is the first time I unbox an earphone with such minimal design, which also happens to carry absolutely zero information regarding the product itself, 
though I suspect that with this being a professional product, those who bought it should either already know the specs before purchasing, or just don't care enough about the specs and instead only bought it because they like the sound. The box opens with the use of a black ribbon, and the first thing I saw is this giant THANK YOU in all caps. Yeah, better be getting some appreciation for purchasing your expensive ass product. Up top is where you can find all the included ear tips packed in a plastic thing. Not to be outdone by Spinfit, the ear tips also conducted their own color show that honestly reminded me of um, old computer cables. As you can see, there are 6 pairs of silicone tips and 3 pairs of foam tips. I can't tell if the foam tips are complies, and I can't find any information in the box, but on one hand, they look and feel different from complies in my collection. There are different models of complies though, so it wouldn't surprise me if these are just models that I haven't tried before. More on this when the review comes out. I had a look at the thank you documentation. It teaches people how to wear and clean the earpieces, all of which I know about already, of course. There's also something about warranty, but because I purchased them through Match I mean Drop, I'm not sure how that works. I don't expect my earphone to go faulty anytime soon though. I had a pair of UE900 patches in 2014 that are still alive and kicking today, and that pair is supposed to be notorious for major build quality issues. Also had a look at this documentation that says important information, so important that I decided 3 seconds of attention for it is already quite enough. But moving on, this is the case that contains my earphone. I took it out and I think it is surprisingly lightweight compared to what I expected. The exterior is metallic while the interior is plastic, which explains its weight. Normally on top of the lid, we should see our name written as indication of the earphone being a custom product, but since mine is the universal version, it just says handcrafted for reference remastered, which is pretty lame. At the bottom, there are some hashtags that I doubt anybody uses. Upon careering the cloth where the case was sitting in, I determined that there are no other things in the box, so I directed my attention back to the case. Trying to feel myself removing the lid with one hand proved to be a tricky endeavor, so I just said, screw it, and cut to when I got to the cloth bag inside. I think this is the same cloth bag that I got when I bought the UE900 almost 6 years ago. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess. Opening the box reveals the star of the show, the Ultimate Ears Reference Remastered Universal Edition. Universal meaning the shell is not molded after the shape of one's ears, but is instead supposed to be the result of an average of many ear shapes. This also explains the need for ear tips, which the custom variants do not require whatsoever. I finally managed to untangle the mess and show you guys the ear pieces. There are many colors to choose from for the faceplate, ranging from totally translucent to this psychedelic design called the Color Waves, which happens to require an extra $80 to the final price. Me being a cheap ass, opted for the peasant white color, which to some people might be really boring, and it probably is, but because the original reference remastered also uses white as the default color, I decided to replicate that look. A bummer that it doesn't say Capital Studio on one of the E pieces though, I wonder if I got a custom one would it say so on the faceplate. It would have been nice to have it for the cloud factor. Regardless, I still think these are a joy to look at if you can forgive the heavy use of what looks to be glue inside, though I suppose that's a way to keep the drivers in place. Speaking of drivers, the reference remastered features three proprietary BAs with multiple crossover points delivering sounds through three separate balls. I think these drivers are used to be called True Tone drivers, but I guess maybe these are different? Actually, that's not the only difference. Rather than using UE's 2-pin connector, these ones use the new IPX connector, which can rotate just like MMCX, but is much more secure, and combined with the new Superbax IPX cable here, you get sweat and waterproofing rated IP67. There are many interesting properties regarding this new cabling system that are worth exploring in my detailed review, but for now, just know that it is supposed to be very durable and should require minimal maintenance. There's no information on the cable in the packaging, but it is actually made of 168 strands of silver-plated copper lids wires in a quartz braid, and the cable is rated with an impedance of 0.75 ohms. This is technically not the best configuration, because it is not made of pure silver wires, and the braids are overall very thin. 
but because there is hardly any other cables that also uses IPX connectors, making any comments without comparison would be a futile effort. The choker is quite interesting as well. It features a translucent plastic that can be pushed into the black piece to lock the whole thing, so that the cable split stays the same until you pull the translucent piece out. I tried it briefly and it worked like a charm. I only worry that undoing the lock would become a major source of cable damage. Anyway, when the choker is pulled all the way back, it can actually be fitted with the Y split thanks to their matching shapes. The cable terminates with a right angle 3.5mm jack, which is something I genuinely prefer over straight angle jacks. Overall, I am very excited about trying these guys on and finally owning a pair of reference monitors, and I can't wait to compare it to my other expensive earphones and give you guys a detailed review. And also, you can expect a detailed review of the new and improved CP100 as well. Once again, thank you Spinfit, and thank you all so much for watching. This is Earphonics Fanaticus, and I'll be seeing you when the reviews come. Goodbye.